Hey, what's up guys, it's Pat Flynn here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you five tips that I've learned to help you write a best-selling book. And this is applicable for those of you who are mainly writing nonfiction, but definitely these tips are helpful for you if you're writing fiction as well. Um, and the main thing to realize here is that these aren't just writing tips, how to write a book. Um, we are gonna get into some of that, but mainly it's the how to approach the book writing process so that you can give yourself the best chance of writing that bestseller. And I know a little bit about this because I wrote a book a couple years ago called Will It Fly? And it was one of the hardest things I ever did. I self-published it. And uh, to my surprise, actually, let me show you on the wall here. Uh, we had this created, um, actually this was a gift to me. And yeah, it was a complete surprise. I had no idea that a self-published author could get on the Wall Street Journal bestseller list. So I'm gonna give you some uh, strategies as you begin your book writing process to give you the best chance to uh, reach that list. Um, now, before we get into the tips here, uh, I do wanna share that, you know, as great as it is to be on a list, the most important thing is that you are giving this book and serving it to as many people as possible who need it. Um, I don't want you to feel disappointed if you don't get on the bestseller list. Like, for example, I didn't get on the New York Times bestseller. A lot of authors want that. But even if you don't hit the list, it doesn't mean your book is a failure. So success for a book author is, did you write a valuable book and is it actually getting in the hands of those who need it? So let's get started. Number one, you need to do proper research for the topic of your book. And there's many different ways to do that. The way that I wrote Will It Fly was specifically by doing surveys with my audience. My audience told me what their most pressing problems were and their biggest pains. And that's what helped to inspire what Will It Fly became. Will It Fly is about how to test your next business idea so you don't waste your time and money. And literally that tagline there came directly from many people's surveys because they were worried about wasting their time and they were worried about wasting their money. So I didn't have to guess anymore what the topic was gonna to be about. It was about, okay, how can we create a business such that you're not wasting your time or you're wasting your money? And this way, it's specifically written with that reader in mind and number two, they also know that this book is for them if that's a problem that they have. So that's running a survey. Now likely you already have an idea of the kinds of things you wanna talk about. The next thing I would do is actually go out there and see what other books exist that serve that same audience, that are in and around the same topic. How will your book stand out? How will it be different? It's really important to do, to do this research and most authors that I speak to who are just starting out for the first time writing their first book actually don't get as deep into that part of the research as they should because you're gonna be spending a lot of time writing this book, a lot of effort, perhaps a lot of money as well uh, in the process, not always necessary, but maybe. And you wanna make sure that you're giving yourself the best chance to succeed. And the only way to stand out of the crowd is to, first of all, know who is in that crowd in the first place. How will your book be positioned in a different way? That's really important to research and understand first up front before you put any time and effort into this project. Okay, number two. Validate your topic idea. All right, so you've researched the topic. Now you wanna go and validate it. And that's actually what this book, Will It Fly, is about. It's about taking these big projects, like writing a book, and shrinking them down into little litmus tests so that you can gauge the response and just determine whether or not that's something you wanna move forward with. And you can do that with your books. A couple ways you can do this. Number one, um, you can just simply write a blog post or create a podcast episode about the topic that you've researched for your book. And you can gauge uh, based on the number of downloads, the traffic, and especially the comments, especially if you have any call to actions, for example. Um, by the way, if you wanna learn more about this topic or if you're interested in hearing more about this, leave a comment below and let me know. Or what other things about this do you wanna hear about? That way you can kind of get a feel for, okay, does this actually resonate with the audience that you have? Number two, you can take it up a notch and do like what my friend Darren Rouse did from problogger.net. He uh, wrote a book called 31 Days to Build a Better Blog. And a lot of people don't know this, but it was actually a series of 31 different blog posts that were then put together into a book. And so because the blog post series did so well, he knew that this was gonna be a, a book that he could sell. And even though it's the exact same material, people like the fact that it's in a book, it's a lot more convenient and it just feels more real. Um, and likely when people are investing in something like a book with that kind of instruction, they're gonna be more likely to take action as well. So that book has done very well. I've purchased it myself and it still continues to sell and make passive income for Darren even years later. Now, instead of a blog post series, you can take this up one notch and collect email addresses to validate, okay, yes, this is a topic that people want more information about. They're giving me their email address, so likely it's something that they want more information about. Michael Hyatt did this with his book, Living Forward, which at first was just a PDF file that you can download in exchange for an email address, but because so many people downloaded it 
and offered their email for it, he knew that this was something that he wanted to expand later into uh, a much bigger project like a book. And this book did very, very well. It got on the top of, of a lot of the charts. Um, and so you can validate your topic by creating a small little lead magnet. And it doesn't have to be a PDF file. It could be a video or something. But again, just having the email be required in order to get access to it, that, that tells you something. Yeah, people, people want this. And then you can move forward. All right, tip number three is to outline your book. Now, Pat, this sounds very obvious. Well, it is very obvious. You need to outline your book before you write it, right? But there's a very specific process that I wanna teach you. I'm not gonna teach you here in this video. I have a whole entire video up here in the card about how to write the first draft of your book fast. And there's a very specific process involving post-it notes and recording and dictating the first draft that makes it super simple and fast for you to crank that out so that you can move on to the, some of the next steps. Um, so making sure you outline and follow that process is gonna be really important. So I'll, we'll just have it in the card up there for you and also a link in the description below. But I would, I would actually recommend watching that video next after you watch this video. All right, number four, this was the biggest struggle for me was focusing when I was writing because a book is a huge project and I could crank out a 5,000 word blog post in just a few hours very easily. But when it came to writing this book, which involved multiple chapters and multiple parts within chapters, it just became this thing that in my head was just so hard to figure out. And I wanted every word to be perfect and it just became a struggle and I saw this big list of all the things I needed to write that I hadn't even started yet. It just became very overwhelming. I actually stopped writing Will It Fly for a good couple months just because I got so overwhelmed. But I hired a book coach and I got some advice and the best piece of advice I got was treat every individual chapter as if it's its own blog post. And I was like, that's so genius. And that makes complete sense. Why didn't I think of that? So you can take that one post -it note and have that just be the one thing that you're gonna focus on right now. It might be one chapter. It might be one story within a chapter if you've outlined it to that detail. Then all of your focus is on that. All of the writing is about that. All of your research is just about that only. And everything else kind of disappears and you can focus. I use a, a Google Doc for every individual part of my book so that I'm not distracted. I used to use Scrivener and that's a great tool that a lot of people use as well. But I just got so overwhelmed by seeing, okay, I'm only writing like this one part of the 50 parts of my book. Um, I, I don't wanna see that. So I have now every individual chapter in its own Google Doc as I'm writing. And that's been really, really helpful to kind of get just, like I said, keep me focused. And again, treating each individual chapter as if it was its own blog post, it really, really helped crank it out for me. And tip number five, and this was a big one, you know, when um, you write a book, you're gonna need, need an editor, right? Now, when most people hear that you need an editor, most people um, don't know this, but they are assuming the copy editor. And that is the person who checks for spelling and grammar and that sort of thing. That's really important, obviously, because if you read a book and there's, it's just chock full of spelling errors, uh, which is very common in self-published books, right? Because you don't have that team that is in the publishing house to kind of do all that for you. Um, it just leaves a bad impression, right? So you need a copy editor, yes. And there's a lot of resources. I'll put some resources uh, down below in the description for you. But more important than that, I feel, is the developmental editor. The developmental editor edits not the grammar and the spelling, but the order of stories, the idea that there should be a new story that should pop in here, that there's too much in this one section, that all the chapters in, are in the right order, really to make sure that a person goes from A to Z while reading your book and not A to C and then get lost and then go to F and then G. Like it just gets insanely crazy sometimes because we are so deep into our own books that we don't understand what it's like for a brand new person to come in and go from start to finish. So by hiring a developmental editor, you're gonna make sure that you're plugging in all the holes, that you're not re being repetitive when you don't need to, that you have the stories in the right places to support the points you're trying to make, all those good things. So two editors that you need to get involved with at least because there are more, but those are the two I wanna share with you that are important. The copy editor, obviously, but that actually comes after the developmental editor. And again, I'll put some links below to some of the people I've worked with and that I know uh, are gonna be helpful to you. All right, so a couple things uh, you should do from this point forward. If you wanna learn how to write the first draft of your book fast, um, you wanna make sure you click one of the cards that's about to come up over on this side, so just hang tight. And then if you want to learn how to market your book and sell it and get more eyeballs on it, get more sales, well, then you're gonna click over on this side. So here are those two videos right now. This one over here to write your first draft fast, click on that next if you're ready for it. Or if you're already past the book writing process and you wanna learn how you're gonna market this thing, um, click on this side over here. So thanks again, best of luck to you and all the best.